Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything 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 Chris Everything Chris Everything Chris Everything Everything Chris And then, um, eh. so talk to us about your route, man, because I know you're one of the very few that has a very successful career without going the uh, U.S. route. What made you take? What made you not go to the U.S.? Um, there's a lot of reasons, but probably the main reason is that, like, I kind of believe in everything happens for a reason. Um, and around the time where uh, I had an offer to go to Stony Brook University. There were some issues with paperwork, not on my side, on the coach that I had at the time side. So it was taking longer than it should have. You know, he was out of the country. I couldn't get in touch with him, this, that, and the other. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's like a whole other story. <laughs> um, and then Russell, um, you know, Paul Douglas? Heard of him, heard of the name. Yeah. Um, he called Russell for me, uh, Russell Levinston of the Leicester Riders, told him about my situation, and yeah. Russell offered me a contract, said, you, you can come here, you can get your degree at Loughborough University, which obviously, you know, it's an amazing, amazing university, um, and I took, I took the opportunity while I was there. And then you uh, got your degree at Loughborough and all that, and then you had some success at Loughborough, I believe, because I know I've heard they've been a great, that's a great institute for a while now, isn't it? Man, how many, yeah. how many, how many trophies did you win there? Oh well, I mean, while I was studying, I won six trophies in the BBL. Is this the um, this guy, while I was studying, I just won six trophies. Like just six, hey. you know. <laughs> man, it wasn't man, easy. I was trying to get one trophy, man. <laughs> no, it was not easy. I'll tell you that right now. It was not. Uh. No, nah, man, definitely, man. Well, well, congrats to you. So when did the um, Essex Pirates thing come about then? Was that after Loughborough? No, no, no. Essex Pirates was before I went to Leicester. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so Essex Pirates was a new team. They only lasted two years. They had financial trouble in the second season. Okay, um, that's unusual in this country. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I was with them for two years before I came to Leicester. Yeah, man, talk us through that whole Essex Pirate journey. You had some vets on the team at the time. Um, you know, you had um, Tana Adu, you had Walid. Walid Mamouni. And um, Samuel. My brother yeah. was there. Marcus Knight was there for a little bit. Like, talk, of us, talk us through that whole, like, that experience of you being so young and you, you're under those guys' wings. I had to mature quick, man. Like, <laughs> I, I wouldn't say I was like a like a kid. I wasn't like immature in my personality, or yeah, just like a quick transition that nobody really prepared me for. So, um, getting there, arriving in Essex, I was all excited. I don't know what I was expecting, and it was just like it was strange. I'd never really been on a team of fully grown men. And they've all played for a long time and, you know, some, you know, arguably like big names um, in, in the English basketball world. And it was just like, oh, OK, I, I got to I got to grow up quick. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can <do> it <laughs> so, yeah, it was, a, it was a big learning curve. Oh, man. And then like the, some of the guys you played under them, what they were like, what were they like to you and how did they um, embrace you? Yeah, um, they, they took me under their wing, man. Um, Waleed especially he was he's such a good natured person um, Marcus kind of just spoke with his actions um, he's very professional um, yeah, typical he was it? very <laughs> mature say again yeah, typical say Marcus again? isn't it <laughs> yeah he's not going to say unless he has to say something you know um, but yeah just being around those guys it, it, it made me understand that like the professional world, you're not going to get babied. You're not going to get spoon-fed. you you got to take care of things yourself um, and carry yourself in a certain way. Yeah, 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 100%, 100%. Yeah, that too. So, obviously, from uh, Essex leading up to Leicester, so obviously Essex prepared you for a lot because you went into Leicester 
for into a winning culture like it's like from the beginning kind of like you was there from the beginning ish right before they were when they were yeah. winning so much right yeah so talk us through that whole like from when you got there up until now and, and what you've experienced with Leicester and, and the stuff you've gone through um I feel like and Leicester are still growing and still evolving now so don't take this yeah. the wrong way but I feel like I was there for a very big um, uh, evolution in, for the Leicester Riders. Um, you know, the year I got yeah. there, he was bringing in so many big names, um, so many GB players and really good guys that were coming out of college, really high-level players. Um, yeah. So it was kind of like a, a big flip for them, I think, based on, you know, their previous years in terms of yeah. winning. Um, and we knew as a culture, we knew that we were really good. We knew that, you know, we were super competitive. Um, the way the team was built, our defense, we could switch one through five. It was crazy, man. Uh, one through four, one through five, um, depending on who was on the court. So we knew what we had. And it was kind of like that underdog mentality. And we, we embraced it. We just we completely embraced it. Um, a lot of the players on that team were new to the league. Um, and for me, it was just another opportunity to get better. And over those first six year, that first six year span playing with the riders before I left, every day I was, you know, pushing to get better. And it was so easy to do that with everybody around me. All um, right, yeah. And you yeah, went there six years and you left, didn't it? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left and you went to, I believe, did you go to QBR then or was it Cheshire first, oh, right? Cheshire first, yeah. I went to Cheshire first season. And then the QBR. So, so what was it there? So what did you experience differently when you went? So you went Leicester and then you, then you went to Cheshire where it's not as much winning as it was before. Um, well, you got to remember before I came to Leicester, I had been for a season like that or two really where you are one of the... <sighs> There's, there's a lot of talent on the team, yeah. but unfortunately, it's not coming together and working to get wins. That's basically what I'm trying to say. So I experienced that already. So when I got to Cheshire, it didn't yeah. take me long to recognize that same feeling. You've got all these oh, talent, yeah. but it's not being brought together correctly. Um, so I recognized it. I understood what was happening before, you know, preseason was finished. Um, and I think the, the the team, like the general managers and stuff, I think they saw it too because it was just swapping and changing yeah. constantly. Um, yeah. I don't know. Change the general managers were swapping or the players, the players and the coaches. That season there, we went through Mad. three or four coaches and what? maybe fifteen players in one season. So Mad. That, crazy. that shows you the problems they were having with people they were bringing in or not knowing how to, you know, put the pieces together. So it was a tough year, man. It was, it was a tough one to deal with. Um, but I think every experience in my career has been absolutely essential. So, How was the culture in Cheshire, like, compared to Leicester, though, like, um, on and off the court? The fans and that, and, and all the fans and how they were off the court. How they, what was the difference you, you experienced with Leicester and Cheshire? Um, well, to be honest with you, I think the fans, from what I've seen on every team in the BBL, are really good fans. Like, yeah. very, you know, welcoming. They, you know, they really are behind you. Um, obviously, not like football, but for us, when we come out of the court or come onto the court, the fans are right there. So you get to interact with everybody, yeah. you know. Um, so in that regard, there's not much difference. Like, they're really nice people both ways. I think the Riders fans, with it being, you know, how much success they've had, um, moving into the huge arena that they have, I would say that yeah, yeah. there's more of them. Um, and I would say, obviously, traveling all the way to the finals, you know, pretty much every year, um, they they've become like a big red army pretty much now. So, yeah, they're a force. They really are a force. Yeah, man, your fans, uh, your fans are dope, man. I came to one of your games, uh, just the last one of the season you had against Manchester. Okay, yeah. And when you had your foot in their neck, 
and you know had had that big old forty point lead. <laughs> oh my gosh, right? Uh, yeah, that was a good game. The fans were just yeah, they had your back, man. So you know, what I mean, I think Yurik tried to start a fight with someone on your team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're oh, it's funny, man. They, they, they were like the fans great are like, guy, He's a great guy. Yeah. Sure. He's a good guy, man. But it's, yeah. you gotta hang him up soon, man. You know what I mean? I was like, <laughs> he's been playing since I was like 15. So that's been, that's a long time. Well, yeah, that's a long time. But yeah, that was a good game you know, they had, though, man. But then yeah. again, Manchester got uh, their own chemistry problems there, and that's um. We'll leave that there. <laughs> everything, 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 Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, Chris. Everything, everything, Chris.